Good morning, everyone. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, welcome to our attendees, to our speakers, and to our guests. Uh, I teach administrative law here in the college. Uh, it's the law of government agencies and the bureaucratic processes that operate in the government. So there is a tendency in law, but especially in administrative law, to turn the real life problems of actual people, actual persons, into manageable abstractions. From this point of view, the restoration work is concerned with units of shelter, with buildings and streets. Uh, these physical structures, from an admin law perspective, can be built anywhere, divorced from complicated historical and cultural considerations. But if wood and steel and stone are all there is to a city, if these are the only things at stake, then we don't need much reflection. However, I would like to invite you to consider the words of Christopher Alexander, one of the centuries of almost influential architects. His ideas have been translated into buildings and cities, as well as the design of networks and software systems. So, in his book, uh, it is quoted, When you build a thing, you cannot merely build that thing in isolation, but must also repair the world around you and within it, so that the larger world at that one place becomes more coherent and more whole. And the thing which you make takes its place in the web of nature as you make it. So according to him, a building, a town, a city, becomes alive and meaningful only to the extent that it can sustain the living patterns of its inhabitants. Our built environments are special to us because they accommodate our lives, our lives events. Not just one pattern of living, but a network of supporting patterns. We happen to love that one corner cafe because that is where we get off with our friends, with the right distance and angle to the street, which will give us access to our schools, our places of work and worship, and so on and so forth. In this light, our cities are protective shells that preserve our cultures. Since a city sustains a unique set of patterns, they are not fungible. Moving people somewhere else without more may not be enough to make people whole and their lives more coherent. Scholars extending Christopher Alexander's work also warn of dangerous anti-patterns, dysfunctional ways of being, which can arise if people are displaced from the spaces that sustain the patterns of their lives. The internal lives of people can reflect the wounds of their external spaces. I hope that when we enter this forum and the rest of the work uh, be done, uh, we enter it knowing what is at stake. Thank you very much again. Welcome. For a further message, I would like to call on uh, Ms. Amina Bernardo to, uh, to, to discuss or to share with us let me get back to the message. Thank you, Attorney Angelo. No, I, was just, I was just kidding when I said that maybe the MSU president did not deliberately to show us the problems that we have in, in Malawi. Inter, internet access is a problem, mm -hmm. uh, electricity mm -hmm. is a problem. Water is a problem, and then after the Marawi siege, double the problem. So let's wait and see what our President Pasadi Mapukuno has to say to us. Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, first I would like to thank our panel for joining us. Uh, you cannot believe how easy it was to get them to agree to speak to you with short notice. Easy because all of them are deeply affected. 
in that situation we can find out that she will be here uh, later. So a very warm welcome and thank you for joining us in this forum, Eyes on Malawi, a look at the situation of the IDP of the Marawi speech. We commemorate the sixth anniversary of the five months of the Marawi speech tomorrow. So first, on behalf of the Philippine Center for Islam and Democracy, allow me to thank our co-organizers, the University of the Philippines Law Center and the Mindanao State University. These are the two state universities of the Philippines. MSU Slain Campus is in Marawi City, and my colleagues there feel the pain of the siege every single day for the past six years. UP, being a sister university to MSU, cannot help but empathize and support in any way possible. And so, both universities are supporting this forum today. We also thank the Pack Publishing, who has provided us with the support for the live streaming for this event and inviting representatives of media as well. Maraming salamat po. Six years ago, the city of Marawi was ravaged by a five-month conflict that left countless lives shattered, families uprooted, and communities torn apart. The Marawi siege not only brought immense destruction to the physical landscape, but of course, it caused immense pain and trauma to the people who called Marawi. The resilience and the strength of the mother of the Marawi residents, our brothers and sisters, Maranao, have been nothing short of inspiring. Today, Marawi City is in the midst of celebrating the Marawi people of peace. As we remember the sacrifices and the challenges endured, the resilience of the Maranaos, it is crucial that we shift our focus towards the rehabilitation and well-being of the displaced persons who have undergone tremendous hardships since that painful day, the painful five months after. The road to recovery has been long and arduous, in spite of positive news accounts of rehabilitation efforts. This forum serves as a platform to remind our fellow Filipinos, our fellow citizens of the world, on the realities of those displaced by the Marawi siege. Joining, joining us today are four distinguished panelists who have shared the loss and have worked to help Marawi to rise from the ashes. We hope we can walk the talk with them, as we all have the power to make a difference. We at PCID have felt that the true situation of the people of the IDPs have faded from the nation's memories, as we are provided with news about the successes of government agencies working together under Task Force Pangon Marawi. We must acknowledge that the rehabilitation process is not solely about rebuilding fiscal infrastructure, not solely providing basic services to the initial stages of rehabilitation. It goes far beyond that. It encompasses the healing of wounds, both physical and psychological, the restoration of livelihoods, the re-establishment of social cohesion, and the empowerment of individuals and communities. It is about fostering hope and resilience, complex land ownership issues in Marawi City, with overlapping claims and disputes has resulted to further delays. Resolving these issues 
and clarifying land ownership rights is a crucial step to the reconstruction process. Then there's inadequate compensation and financial support. And we're very glad that the compensation, uh, Marawi Compensation Board is with us. They need to save our, our home for the future, <laughs> for the losses they incur during the conflict. The complexities of the compensation process, including bureaucratic hurdles and delays, have left individuals and families without the necessary resources to rebuild their homes and livelihoods. Today, we hope to hear from Attorney Salina of the Marawi Compensation Board, because tomorrow, hallelujah, they are signing the IRR for the Marawi Compensation Board, which means that the process to provide compensation for those who have been displaced in Marawi City is going to be fast track. But under Ms. Salina, we will not just of an optimist to keep our fingers crossed. So thank you so much for joining us today. I'm really excited to hear our panelists because you are going to hear from different uh, perspectives about what can be done in Marawi apart from building physical infrastructure. So Marami Salamat Po, Shukran, and welcome. He is the chairperson of the Ad Hoc Committee on Marawi Rehabilitation and Victims' Compensation, vice chairperson of the House Committees on Disaster Resilience, Mindanao Affairs, National Defense and Security and Peace, Reconciliation and Unity. And he is also an assistant majority leader. So, again, we encourage you to join in on the conversation to slido.com slash eyes on Marawi. Post and upload questions there. So, we start with a training stand. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tammy. So, how do we like in a shape plan regime? Bismillah, yung kapen ni Moki. Maganda mo ba kung po sa ating lahat? Good morning. Morning. Quoting Albert Einstein, peace cannot be kept by force. It can only be achieved by understanding. So we are here gathered today to understand the cost of the IDP, so the internally displaced persons of the Marawi siege, and we are also here as one in celebration of the Marawi Week of Peace. So today's event, I will be giving updates on the status of the Marawi Compensation Board. I will introduce to you what is the Marawi Compensation Board, and I will also include on what to expect to the Marawi Compensation today's and on the following days. So, yeah. yeah. So for Marawi Compensation Board, it was created for Suwan to RA or Republic Act No. 11696 or the Marawi Siege Victims Compensation Act of 2022. Yes, it is a law promulgated and signed last year, April 2022. It is a law primarily concerned with the compensation and giving reparation to those uh, to those who died and legally presumed dead because because and by reason of the Marawi siege, and to those owners of the residential, cultural, commercial, educational, and other properties destroyed or damaged by reason of the Marawi siege. The Marawi compensation is also a mechanism for transitional justice. Six years after Marawi siege, as Mom, uh, um, Mom said a while ago, that not all and mostly of the internally displaced persons of the most affected areas of Marawi have not yet returned to their homes. So we hope that this Marawi Compensation Board will be an instrument and the thing that will drive the IDPs to return not only in reconstructing their homes destroyed by damage, but also normalizing their lives the way they did before the Marawi siege. 
The Miami Compensation Board is also an independent quasi-judicial body. They, it is an agency that will give compensation to the claimants of the Miami siege. No, they will evaluate, they will process, and they will approve compensation for the claims of those damaged properties. For background, the chairperson and the members of the Marawi Compensation Board, or the composition as a whole of the Marawi Compensation Compensation Board, started only on January 2020. This year, they took their oath on January and second, and took their second oath before the President of the Philippines on February 2023. So it is. Three months, the Maori Compensation Board is more than three months old. But despite the short living of the Maori Compensation, the Maori, the board, she, uh, still by the chairperson, Attorney Maisara Nyantam and Lante, make sure that we, that they did their best and they did what they can do to formally organize and operationalize the Maori Compensation Board. So they had a courtesy visit and consultative meetings with the different LGUs, the province of Lanao del Sur and the Marawi City on February, right after they, uh, took, uh, they took their oath of office. Further, they had also been undergone into different capacity developments since they are they are new, the board is new, so they need to also equip themselves for the preparation of compensating the claimants. They had also an ocular inspection on the Marawi, uh, most affected area of the Marawi siege. Because uh, the, Marawi the mandate of the Marawi Compensation Board is to pay those damaged structures inside the most affected areas and other affected areas. So they need or they deem it necessary to first uh, inspect what is the real situation inside the most affected areas. Further, it is a challenge for a new, newly created agency for their staffing pattern and budget. But I'm happy to laugh with the, with the hardworking uh, board, member of opposition of board, they got or they secured uh, they secured a notice of office staffing and for the staffing positions no so as of now for the 92 platilia positions we have already filled in all those except all one and we and the operation operating budget also for the compensation board was already downloaded to the board so for the implementing rules and regulation, it is, it is actually a requirement under the R8-11696 to promulgate the implementing rules and regulations. No? So this first draft of the IRR was passed on March 14, 2023. So it, uh, the first draft actually is a consolidated draft from the LGUs or the local government units from the Department of Human Settlement and Urban Development and also from the IDPs themselves. So this is actually a, a, a collective effort no, from the different sectors. So after the passage of the first draft, this was presented to the five agencies mentioned in the RA 11696, which are the Department of Budget and Management, the Department of Finance, the Bangsamoro Human Rights Commission, the Task Force Bank of Malawi and the National Economic Development Authority. So after the comments and recommendation of these five agencies were taken into consideration and being be consolidated, the second draft hall was passed by the board and presented to an expert hearing on April 27, 27 2023. So these experts are those persons who can help us, technically speaking, on the Crafting of the IRR. So after the expert hearing for the third draft, we had also uh, conducted a public consultation. Now this draft was actually presented now to the public, especially for those IDPs who were the claimants of the compensation. So after the two-day 
public consultation on May 15 and 16. The draft, the draft was Alhamdulillah finally approved on May 19, 2023. And they will have a ceremonial signing tomorrow, May 23. Yes. Yeah. May 23, May 23, tomorrow, they will have a ceremonial signing of the implementing rules and regulation. So after the IORR is passed and promulgated by the board, what to expect us for, what to expect from the Marawi Compensation Board? So first, as I, as I said, there will be a ceremonial signing tomorrow. And second, this IORR is required to be published into general, uh, General circulating newspaper, no? So, after that, we will also adopt and promulgate our rules of procedure. And then we will announce the commencement of filing of claims. So, these are the updates for the Marawi Compensation Board. And hopefully, we can, by the Marawi Compensation Board, we can help those IDP to attain and achieve the everlasting peace. No? So with that, thank you so much. And uh, we will have a an open forum later so you can throw your questions later. And I will also leave it here, my personal email, so you can email me if you have any questions. So thank you very much and good morning.